Welcome back to another Animal of the Week. This week is the Christmas special, and so I've picked something Christmassy, the Candy Cane Shrimp. This isn't its actual name, really it's called the Randy's Pistol Shrimp, or Aletheus Randali. However, its strong red and white markings give it the appearance of a candy cane, and so hence the nickname. There are actually two other shrimps similar to ours, the Peppermint Shrimp and the Sugar Cane Shrimp. Both look similar, however lack the markings as prominent as the Candy Cane Shrimp, and so we'll ignore them. These festive looking shrimp live very far from what most would think as being a festively themed place. They dwell in the Indian and Central Pacific Oceans, well away from the North Pole. However, being in the Indian Ocean does mean they can be found around Christmas Island, so I guess that's Christmassy enough. I'm really stretching here to make this in any way linked to the holiday season. They prefer shallow depths of around 18 meters, however have not been extensively studied, meaning their range could vary wildly. The candy cane shrimp like to live in burrows, and actually have a symbiotic relationship with the Randall's prawn goby, in which the fish protects the shrimp in return for shelter in the burrow, but more on this amazing relationship later. It isn't known specifically what the shrimp eats, but it's a shrimp, and so it probably eats what most others do. Small bits of plankton, algae, small crustaceans, literally anything that's small, edible, and obtainable. The symbiotic relationship between the candy cane shrimp and the Randall prawn goby also extends to feeding, with both animals helping each other to find food and protect each other when searching. The prawn goby also eats essentially the same things as the shrimp, and so the relationship works great for both of them, hence why it's called a symbiotic relationship and the shrimp isn't just another parasite. Even the breeding processes of both fish and their shrimp friends are heavily intertwined. When the goby breeds, it will lay its mass of eggs in the burrow it shares with the candy cane shrimp, and it will even invite its mate in to live with them, forming a strange sort of thruple. The candy cane shrimp breeds through making entrances into nearby burrows inhabited by the opposite sex, forming an even larger burrow system. This means that at one point, potentially three different fish and three different shrimp could all be living in the same large burrow system. Not much is known of the actual mating procedure, but it can be assumed it is similar to how all other shrimps mate. The male will lie at a right angle to the female and transfer a spermatophore onto a special receptor on the female's abdomen where the female is carrying the eggs. The most interesting thing about these shrimp is clearly their symbiotic relationship with the Randall prawn goby, so let's delve a bit more into that. The shrimp have incredibly poor eyesight, and therefore rely on the goby for alerting them of predators, but if the shrimp can't see well, how does the fish do this? Well the goby is actually always hovering over the shrimp, with one fin on the shrimp's antenna. When it sees a predator, it will flick the antenna, alerting the shrimp to the danger, and both will flee into the shrimp's burrow. A behavioural adaptation these shrimp possess is their burrowing abilities. They are very active in burrow maintenance, constantly expanding and shifting around the entrances and exits. At night, when both fish and shrimp are safely in the burrow, the candy cane shrimp will collapse all ways in, sealing them off for the night. While well, being a half-blind, 3 cm long shrimp means a lot is going to hunt you, we have seen the extensive measures they take not to be eaten, from the help of the Randall prawn goby to the collapsing of their burrow entrances at night. Essentially anything that's big enough will eat these little shrimp. Not much is known of their populations and how humans affect them, though they are only known from a few small places in the world, so this could mean they are under threat, or there are far more of them we have yet to discover. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you'd like to see more from us. And Happy Christmas!